Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all planned. Okay, for those of you that don't think that what's happening with our food systems around the world is not planned, you've got another thing coming. Don't prepare. Everything's going to be okay. Uncle Sam is going to take care of you forever. Well, you know what? I have to disagree. How can this not be planned? Dutch government to seize 600 farms at gunpoint if they have to, claiming that nitrogen is a pollutant. Ladies and gentlemen, without nitrogen, we have no food. Take a look at what happened in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, they went from using fertilizers one day to not using any fertilizers at all the next day. And look at what happened. Their food system collapsed. Their monetary system collapsed. Why is that? Because in the age and time that we live in, we need fertilizer in order to get the appropriate amount of yield required to feed the world, i.e. to feed the country that you live in. So if you think that what's going on in the Netherlands with the Dutch farmers and the governments telling them that, A, a lot of you guys are not going to be here next year because we have to save the dirt. When there are other countries and other non-governmental organizations that are stating, hey, next year we're going to have almost a billion, if not more, people around the world who are on the verge of starvation. I'll go over a few excerpts that I highlighted from this article with you all, but if you don't think that this is coming to a city near you, if you don't think that this is coming to a country near you, you better think again. Because what they're doing here in the Netherlands is they're seeing how not only the Dutch react the dutch farmer and the people react to what they're doing to their food system there but a pilot program to see how the world reacts you have to understand for those of you that live in fantasy world when you go to the supermarket and you see food it had to come from somewhere and from my experience from what i've observed over the years i'm looking outside because it's starting to snow hard again <laughs> Incredible. It was, the snow was supposed to be gone by today. But anyways, I digress. For those of you that go to a supermarket and you see everything is nicely packaged and everything, that had to be grown somewhere, right? And most of the people that scream the loudest are people that are not close to areas where food is grown, that don't know how food is put on the shelf, that don't know what it takes to actually grow food at capacity, at mass, enough to feed a large amount of people. In my experience, those are the people that scream the loudest because they think that food just magically appears. We are going to learn a very hard lesson as humanity. And when people start suffering, a lot of those people that will suffer the most will be those people that are calling for this. The only ones that won't suffer will be the people that are actually pushing through these policies. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand that government officials, governments, they're already prepared. They're prepared for all of this. I guarantee you that when a time of starvation starts, and there will be a time of starvation in our future, and 20 years from now, we will be studying and we'll be reading on what it is that caused this time of starvation, and we'll hopefully learn from it, but it's going to happen. Why? It goes back to something that I've said an awful lot of times. It's that we've allowed governments to grow too powerful. Look at here. They're going to make these farmers get off their land or relocate or stop farming altogether. And how is it that governments implement force, ladies and gentlemen, with that same tool that they've been trying to take away from us? And in some countries, they've successfully done so with that same tool that they've been trying to take away from us forever. All right. So think about that. When George Washington said that government is nothing but force, that's exactly what it is. You can take that to the bank. Just don't pay your taxes and you'll see how forceful government can really be. Another round of farmer protests could soon be on the way in the Netherlands following an announcement that as many as 600 farms, now the Netherlands is a small country, uh, throughout the country may get seized for polluting the environment with nitrogen, that same thing that we need in order to grow food. 
and some people say this is not planned do you really think that those people that are making these policies and trying to push them through do you think they don't know i mean how many phds does it take to run of government they've got a whole bunch of them but man they sure do make a lot of mistakes for being phds and they continue to say that the eu wants to phase out the use of nitrogen they did not learn from sri lanka they did not learn or either they did learn of what it is that caused Sri Lanka to fail, to collapse, and they don't care. In response, Farmers Defense Force leader Mark Van says he and others will take to the streets in opposition to the new standards, which unfairly dubs nitrogen as something harmful when it is really just a common fertilizing agent that plants use to grow and thrive. Van Den argues that this claim is completely wrong and that nitrogen was never considered a pollutant until very recently when suddenly it started taking the blame for, say it ladies and gentlemen, say it right here, here, you, you can read it for yourselves, that way I don't get in trouble, okay, for that right there. How long have we been hearing about this? And right now I'm watching it snow like crazy. Although I do believe that uh, in Alaska, we're going to have another another warm winter, warmer than usual. And that is a common thing that happens in Alaska during grand solar minimum cycles is that Alaska actually gets a little bit warmer. So in a way that's not good, we rather it be cold here than to get a lot of snow. We rather it be cold throughout the winter. In my opinion, it's a lot safer to drive on roads when it's really cold than when it's warm. When it's warm, you don't have that good attraction because the roads are a little more slushy uh, than if it were nice and cold. He says under the EU's so-called green agenda, the Netherlands will be locked up because it will, it will be legally almost impossible to issue permits. Not for houses, not for farms, and not for roads. So they're pretty much getting stuck in time in order to save the earth but forsaking the people of their country. Root had announced at the time that by 2030, the Netherlands will see 50% fewer nitrogen emissions due to forced farm closures and relocations. So they've been planning this for a long time. So don't tell me that this was not all planned. This aligns with the EU's Natura 2000 scheme, which requires all EU member states to remove industry, including farming, from areas deemed to be of ecological importance. And who is the EU, ladies and gentlemen? Who is in charge of the entire EU? Who writes policies for the entire EU? I thought that the EU was a coalition of many different countries coming together. But now it seems that now that all of these countries that have come together, they have their own elected leaders of each country, are now having to answer to someone who was never elected by anyone. They continue to say some farmers would have to cut emissions by up to 95% in order to meet that standard, which would basically force them to close. As much as 30% of all livestock will also need to go, depriving the country of sustenance. Not only their country, but remember that the Netherlands is one of the biggest, I think they're the second largest exporting nation of food in the world. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe that's per capita, but their farmers are superstars. They've got it dialed in and they know how to grow food in great amounts. So just imagine how much food or calories they're taking away, not only from their country, but to other countries that they export to. Also, imagine the economic hardship that these farmers are going to have when they have to be relocated and or when they have to give up their farms. And then who's going to buy that land? That land is no longer any good. Because if you can't farm on it, then what are people going to do with it? If you can't build on it, like they said, that you can't build roads, you can't build houses, what are people going to do with that land? They're forcing their farmers to pretty much go bankrupt and allowing the land to just sit there idle when people in their country are going to go hungry and people around the world that were used to being able to import from them will go hungry as well. What's that going to do? How's that going to affect me here in the United States, AP? Well, if they can't grow enough and the people that depended on them growing that food who can no longer import food from them, they're going to have to go out to the open market and bid uh, the prices higher on, on whatever it is that they're not growing, making those things more expensive for you and for me and for anyone that consumes that particular item. 
And finishing it up here, all these policies are out of those institutions and they are being implemented in our country first, like I talked about earlier. We are sort of the pilot country together with Canada for this agenda. Well, I would say that the very pilot country was Sri Lanka and you already seen what happened there. But it says here that Canada is also going to go with this nitrogen agenda as well i think i might have heard of that but i haven't really looked into that too much anyone from canada please leave it in the comments if that's true and i wanted to go ahead and read this editor's note for you ladies and gentlemen because just listen to it remember protests are nothing more than slaves begging their masters not to steal from them or not to harm them the masters don't care the real problem is that government is slavery, and the belief that we need a master to survive is utterly ridiculous. The sooner we can figure this out, the sooner we can be out of this slave system constructed around us. And again, I say what George Washington said. He said, government is nothing but force. And then I'll go to something that I've been saying for a long time. We need to understand, we the people need to understand who the enemy is. It's not each other. It's not you. It's not me. It doesn't matter what side of the political aisle you're on. It doesn't matter what ideology you have. The real enemy is not you and me. The real enemy is government. And governments are so humstrung right now with what's going on with the financial system that it, they are doing everything that they can in order to be able to keep control over the population when the time comes. And how can you control a population, ladies and gentlemen? Ask yourselves, how do you control a population? If you control the food, you control the population. Having said that, uh, I hope you got something out of this. In other words, prep up. Prep up, ladies and gentlemen, because I guarantee you this. The government in the Netherlands, I bet you they probably have more self-defense tools than the farmers do. And that's what's going to come down to eventually. Eventually, it'll come down to a fight. I've been saying this for years. Why? Because history just says so. Have a great day. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.